Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. If you process payroll using a third-party software or payroll service like Paychex, you can enter the payroll information into QuickBooks Online Plus by using a journal entry. The payroll summary report you receive from your payroll service will contain all of the information that you need to enter. If you use a third-party payroll service to process your payroll, you could enter a journal entry like the one that's shown in the following example. In this case, note that you will not track the liabilities in the journal entry, as the payroll service reports and pays the payroll liabilities for you. You will, however, need to make entries for the gross pay for employees, as well as for the taxes that were withheld. Click the Create icon and select Journal Entry from the Other heading to open the journal entry page. In the Journal Date field, enter the Paycheck Date. You can enter a Journal Entry Number into the Journal Number field if you would like. You will now need to create entries within the Debit and Credit columns. The first entry is a debit to the expense account that is used to track gross wages. This is where you will enter the total for the pay period. Next, debit the expense account used to track Social Security payments. This is where you will enter the total of all withheld Social Security. The next entry will debit the expense account used to track federal unemployment payments. This is where you will enter the total of federal unemployment tax withheld. Next, debit the expense account used to track Medicare payments. This is where you will enter the total Medicare payments withheld. Debit the expense account used to track state taxes where applicable. This is where you will enter the total state taxes withheld. Then debit the expense account used to track the third-party payroll processing fees. This is where you will enter the total processing fees charged by your payroll company where applicable. The final entry will credit the bank account from which the payroll is deducted. This is where you will enter the total amount of your payroll run. This will include gross pay, deductions, and the processing fee from your payroll company. To make entries easier for your next payroll, you can make this journal entry recurring. Click the Make Recurring link at the bottom of the page. Enter a name that is easy to remember into the Template Name field. Set the template type to Unscheduled. This will save the template but not set a specific schedule for recurrence. That way you can select the template when needed and then edit the amounts shown. At that point you can click the Save Template button to save the template. Also note that the preceding example does not show any accrual of employer liabilities, as the payroll company is responsible for that. However, if you do not use a third-party payroll company, or you are responsible for making the liability payments, you will need to slightly adjust the journal entry format shown to note the liabilities you are holding for payment. In this scenario, you will need to enter three credit lines within the journal entry instead of the single final credit line as shown in the example. First, you will need to credit the bank account used to process payroll by the amount of the processing fee. Next, credit the liability account that will be used to track all of your payroll liabilities by the amount of the payroll liabilities that you need to record for the payroll. Finally, credit the bank account used for processing your payroll by the net amount of the paychecks. This is where you will enter the net pay, which is the total amount of the payroll minus any payroll liabilities or deductions. Note that the payroll liabilities should be entered into the line above instead. This will allow you to track those amounts in a liability account until the time comes to pay those liabilities. When it comes time to pay the liabilities you have recorded, you can then write a check to pay the liabilities and attribute the amount to the liability account you use to track payroll liabilities within the Account Details section of that check. After writing the check, the amount in the payroll liability account should either be zero or the current outstanding payroll liability amount. Also note that federal and state employee withholding taxes are not shown within the journal entries because these withholdings are paid to the tax agencies directly from the employee's gross pay. These are not an expense to the employer as the employer only acts as an intermediary between the employee and the tax agencies. For the correct withholding information and forms, be sure to consult with your payroll service or investigate the options within your third-party software if used. Finally, note that these examples are simple examples of the journal entries that must be made to manually account for payroll. 
if you need to create a more complex payroll journal entry to account for insurance premiums or retirement contributions, for example, you should consult with your accountant or payroll service. Most payroll services will gladly provide you with the required information you need to record for your company. Your accountant should also double-check these entries for accuracy as well. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.